Old school versus new school communication in the workplace, plus five characteristics you need to add to your conversation in order to pep, in order to increase pep, the productivity, the efficiency, and profitability of your organization. Hey, what's up, folks? This is Granison Shines, and welcome to the live broadcast on today, Wednesday, the 7th of October. We are going to be talking about Guess what? Communication. Our forte here is all about communication and giving you the information you need that you can take back right away, right when you finish listening to this broadcast and go implement it in your current workplace environment. So thank you very much for attending. I am pleased to be the one to give you this information. Let me start it off with this. Communication in the workplace, a 37 billion. That's right, 37 billion. I mentioned it last time. This is going to be what we're going to be hanging our coattails on because we want to resolve this problem. And it's all about understanding how to communicate, the who, the what, the why, the when, the where, the how of communication in order to effectively communicate. So before we dive into the information, while you're here, go ahead and subscribe, click the bell also so you can get the notifications and make sure you share the channel with colleagues, share the channel with friends, share the channel with those and other people who you know, friends, family, cousins, in-laws, everyone else who needs to understand more about communication. So if you're here, if you are a leader in any capacity, leader at home, parenting, if you're a leader in the workplace, if you're a leader of the country, whatever, it doesn't matter. If you are a career professional, you are actively in the workplace environment, or you're a professional, or excuse me, an, an entrepreneur or a business owner, then this is for you because we are all about how to utilize communication how to utilize leadership, how to utilize accountability, and how to utilize all that in essence of confidence under the auspices of confidence. It takes confidence in order to do what you need to do effectively and to grow even more. So if you're in the process of growing, in which you should be, I know that I am, I'm consistently growing, 47 years old, still growing. If you're in the process of upscaling, getting more information, you're in the process of getting better, having a better version of you, then you are at the right place. And again, thank you very much for viewing our conversation. We have this live broadcast, this live stream every Wednesday at 10 a.m. And then every Friday we post a new video. So make sure again, you click the notification bell so you get the notifications when we are uploading and when we are live. So let's dive into what we're going to talk about today. Oh, by the way, if you want to send me a question, need to send me a question, desire to send me a question, all of the above, Send it to info at sudurintl.com. That's info at S-E-D-U-I-R-E-I-N-T-L.com. I have it open right here. Got my email open and the live chat so we can make sure that I answer all of your questions regarding what we're going to be talking about today. Now, again, communication, this $37 billion problem, communication, I always like to say it's just because you know how to talk doesn't mean you know how to communicate. I'll say it again. Just because you know how to talk doesn't know you doesn't mean you know how to communicate. And communication is all about understanding what it is someone is saying to you without the use of the imagination, without the use of assumptions and presumptions, getting a clear understanding. So I had a conversation with one of my friends yesterday, and we're conversing, and we're just talking on the phone, and he was under the impression, which we are too, is that if you're going to understand something, you're going to dive into something, you must understand what it is first. You have to understand what it is first before you can start utilizing all of the tools, the techniques, and the tips that are available to you in order to do that thing better. So guess what? If you want to be an engineer, like, like he is an engineer, then you have to understand what engineering is, whether it's electrical engineering, whether it's mechanical engineering, whether it's software engineering, wherever it is, you have to really understand that first. Then you can start learning the different languages, it's communication. You can start learning the different out aspects of whatever it may be. So in order for us to be on the same page, what I'm going to do is make sure I give you the definition of communication. Now, I know I did this last time when we talk about communication. I'll do it again when we talk about communication. I'll do it again when we, I'll give you the definition of confidence when we talk about confidence. I'm going to give you the definition of leadership when we talk about leadership. I'll do it every single time. Why? Not because we don't have anything else to say, but it's because repetition is how you learn. Repetition is how you get it into your noodle. Repetition is how you continue to get it from here to a deeper understanding, intimate understanding right here, and then you can move forward in the right manner. 
But before we do that, I always like to make sure that I give you something while you are here. So in the description below, you'll see a link. If you download that particular link or click on it, you'll download what we call the communication flow diagram. Now that's only about eh, half of the diagram. And I'm giving you that just the half because we're gonna talk about more internal within an organization. And then later on, we'll talk about some of the satellite, give you the full diagram where we talk about some of the satellite information pieces and how you can communicate to those prospects or those people better, all right? So download that right now. And let's talk about, while you're downloading it, let me give you the definition of communication. I'm gonna read it to you verbatim so that we are all on the same page. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna read it to you word for word, and then I'll add my little touches to it. So here's the definition. The act or process of utilizing words, sounds, behaviors, and or body movements, positions to express or exchange information, to express your thoughts, your ideas, and feelings to someone else, okay? That's the definition of communication. Now, we're talking about your, your words, utilizing words and sounds, or the process of using words and sounds, and which is verbal communication, and talk, also talks about body positioning and body movements and positions. That's nonverbal communication. Both of those two go hand in glove. In fact, there's not a time where you can communicate verbally where you are not also communicating non-verbally. You can try as hard as you want to to deceive and or to make the other person think what you want them to think, and there is a way to do that. But the body language will tell you what the person, if you know how to read the body language, the body language will tell you exactly or even more, give more of the truth of what you're saying. Because I could be saying, well, I don't think that I want to do that be saying yes. So I'm giving the body language. I'm giving the words that don't match. So what is more prevalent? Well, we'll talk about that a little bit later on. That's actually a subject for another time. But we're attacking this $37 billion problem within organizations of being of utilizing or not being as efficient, not being as profitable, and not being as, 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 as yes, efficient. I think I said efficient. Efficient ability and we call PEP making sure that we have every single aspect of this so we can be more communicative when we are in our organizations, when we're communicating with people. And we'll talk about all the little nuances. In fact, I'm gonna give you at the end, so stay to the end of the broadcast, I'm gonna give you five little known things that we don't pay attention to, the characteristics that we don't pay attention to much in terms of communication. But I promise you, when you start paying attention to what we're gonna talk about, you're gonna utilize communication in a totally different way because you have a deeper understanding. Let's go to the diagram. So if you downloaded the diagram, okay? Download the diagram and now you have, so let's get this diagram for a second. So in the diagram, you have the, the, the different levels, green, yellow, red, the BOP, we call the business operations and process levels of an organization. The business aspect of it, that's where the C-suite, or more the decision maker, strategy, strategic people, or, or the ones who outlay the strategy of the business and stakeholders, they reside there. You have the operations, people who are, uh, who can, to make the processes and or some of the other information. Now, you might have direct subordinates, or you might not in that level. And then you also have people at the process level, the front line of the business, who are actually doing the marketing, doing the sales, out of the work for, uh, in the floor, on the floor, in the field, those people also. So you have people, and you'll see people at the bottom. You have people that are horizontally within that organization, the, the tri levels there, the business operations and process. And then you have people vertically also. Okay, so you have people across departmental, and this is how the conversation flows or communication flows. Cross departments. Sales is talking to marketing. Marketing is talking to purchasing. Purchasing is talking to people internal with the organization on what the needs are. Then you also have the systems and you have the process on the outside, right? So you have people that operate in the systems, or I should say in the processes, and then those processes are embedded in our systems or technology most of the time nowadays more organizations. There's probably not a process that is so, uh, that not so automated nowadays that it doesn't require a system or you don't have a system. This, not, this enables us to have more disparate organizations. I'll dive into that a little bit later on. And then we have those people, all three of the, all three levels of those people who are also involved with the product, which is the, the first circle out there, right there. You see the blue circle, the product, and then out to the customer, which is that at the end, we're actually talking to the customer so they can buy our product or service. 
And so this is how communication flows up and down through the organization and then unilateral or horizontally within the organization as well. And then it goes outside the organization talking about the product, it goes outside the organization talking about the so when, we, when we integrate with the clientele, the customers. Now, in that little circle there, in that side, everything in that circle from the most outer circle to all the way inside, that's where a lot of miscommunication can happen. That's where a lot of miscommunication does happen. So it's incumbent upon us to understand how to utilize communication effectively and how to utilize it so that it gets out to the clientele even as fast as possible. OK, so bear with me. We're going to dive into that. And again, stay to the end. I'm going to give you five characteristics that you need to start thinking about in terms of your communication and how that flows from the inside all the way to the out. OK, five different little aspects that we utilize also in martial arts. Right. Utilize what I'm going to tell you in martial arts in terms of communication. It's very similar in martial arts communication, especially the nonverbal portion of that. So that's the diagram. All right. So now I'm going to paint you this picture. And the picture starts off like this. Now we have the diagram, the definition. There's been evolution in everything that we have income that we have embarked upon since humanity, right? We're always progressing, we're always evolving, change is always happening. And change even happens at the level for communication or the communication levels. Nonverbal communication is still there. And there are some progressives, some progressives as progression there as well. Verbal communication has also changed, right? So if we look at technology right now, technology, there's more power in this device here, my phone, than there was in the, the first computer that was ever created in, in calculating information. There's more power in that little device than a computer that was the size of a room initially when it was first came out. And so you see that the progression of the technology has gotten better and better, faster and everything else. And it's actually gotten smaller so that we can carry around these little devices. So you have the progression there. You have progression and evolution in medical science. Medical science is tremendous now in terms of surgeries and, and medicines and the genetics that, that are out there. So you have all that going for you as well, which is totally advanced from cutting people open. Now there's, there's surgeries that, we, that they can do now that you need to have, to have to be very evasive and, and go inside the body to where it's now not intrusive, not evasive, and they can fix things with tools and just poke a hole here and there and, and take things out and fix things. It's, it's amazing, right? And then you also have that when you talk about the building that you're in. We progress there. All the materials that we utilize then we used to utilize lead, paint that had lead in it. Now we don't utilize that progression in technology, right? We used to utilize as best as those. We found that those things were bad for us, and so we don't use those sorts of things anymore. We use more of a glass kind of insulated insulation thing. I mean, there's a lot of advances when we talk about it. So even the speed of how we build homes, the speed of how we build buildings, all that has changed. Everything has changed. And just continue on. Conversation. Communication has also done the same thing. We have technology now that allows us to, to talk to people on an instantaneous level. When we used to, back in the 1500s, we used to have smoke signals, right? That was the first line of communication. The indigenous people used smoke signals. And you had the smoke had to rise high enough in order to get the signal. And, and then we had to look at it and interpret it. And hopefully the wind didn't blow the wrong way, right, to, for miscommunication. And then like the oldest, then we start utilizing... Uh, over 2,000 years ago, we started utilizing pigeon posts, right? The Romans started utilizing pigeon posts. That was kind of the first thing, you know, communicate with pigeon posts and everything else and sending information in. And then we graduated to the aspect of uh, snail mail. So back in, I think the oldest, the oldest piece of snail mail is like 255 BC. And that's where we start. And now we still use snail mail. And we know how long it takes for something to get from one place to the other when we're utilizing that technology as far as communication wise. And then we graduated to the telegram or the telegraph that would send information from one particular node to another node somewhere else, right? It's almost like kind of like texting nowadays, except it, it had a, it, you had, it wasn't so individualized. Not everyone had it. You had to go to a certain location where you could receive the message. And then that was back in 18, I think, 36. Then 1876, guess what happened? The invention of the telephone with Ma Bell, right? Telephone allowed us to, now that has also progressed in technology. We still utilize telephone today, but there used to be so many operators that were moving the wires around, everything else. And communication, as with technology got better, we got faster with it. 
And then we had the text message. First text message was that was sent in 1992. First text message, yep. And then we went to video messaging in Japan in 1990. This is four years later, 1996. They sent the first video message. So what's next after that? As you can see, technology has gotten faster, small, and they, they start to progress faster as time went along, right? And what's next? Holograms, maybe, right? So we have videos that we can see right now. Maybe it's 3D from a node, right? Pops up. We've seen it on movies. I always say movies tell the future. So we've seen it right now. Maybe you may have a little device in your wrist where it comes up and someone's uh, talking there in 3D via a hologram. I don't know, but I bet it's going to go there. I can see that it may go there. And so that you have the progression of, of communication. And it's important to understand that we are still communicating and we're still evolving. And in fact, if you look at some of the movies now, and this is from a personal side, and I'm talking about the professional side. If you look at some of the movies now, you see people who are, you see kids now, and this wasn't so prevalent back in the day, kids who talk to their parents in, in many different ways. I don't know when we started seeing that, but it used to be back in Leave it to Beaver, yes, sir, no, sir, yes, they, they communicate to their parents, they respect their parents. Now you see kids, and you may have this in your home, and if you do, I, that's just their business. If I say get control of it, we're yeah, get out of my room. I'm like, wait a minute, I'm the parent. There's no getting out of my room. My kid has never told me that, right? And so we have these little nuances in communication that have changed. Children, oh, my dad, I hate you. What do you mean you hate me? Wait a minute, wait, I brought you to this world. Yeah, I'll take you out kind of thing, right? But the, the, you see that the evolution of communication has gotten more loose. And guess what happens? Those people that work at home, they grow up, and what happens? They go into the workplace environment. And so you have a little bit of transition in communication there as well. So now what we're going to talk about also where the communication has gone, old school communication versus new school communication. Back in the old school communication was very more so authoritarian. I'm going to read you some information on a diagram that I found online, which is very much so in line with what we have researched. They just had it all written out. Like, this is perfect. And so you have the, the communication that has changed also in the workplace. So we're going to talk about the five different generations and what that looks like in a moment here. I'm going to answer a couple of questions as we've been talking. I've been having some notes and some things come up. So here's the deal. Make sure while you are here to subscribe to the channel, make sure that you have clicked the bell so you can get the notifications and also make sure that you share the information. And when you look at a video, make sure you click the like button. And if you dislike it, hit it twice to make sure that we really know that you disliked it. But there you have it. All right. So making sure that you share the information. Our goal here is to reach a billion people with a B, but we're going to start with that small goal of reaching out a million people. So we need your assistance, your help. So thank you very much on that. So let me get to one of the questions that I have here. Um, this is now we have email, also video text, and soon you get to, soon we get to teleport. Yes, somebody said, talk about soon we get to teleport. Teleport station, boom, whenever that happens, I, I really hope I'll be alive there because I would just love to teleport. That'd be so awesome, wouldn't it? So let's get to one of the questions. One of the questions here that I have from... From Sarah said, would it be considered a form of communication? Would you consider the current forms of communication, text, phone, email to, to be a distraction or not? It can be. If you're talking about anything, any sort of technology, anything that is besides talking to someone face to face, that, that can be a distraction. But it's again, it's a tool. All these pieces of devices and, and mobile devices and other what they call disruption devices or interruption devices, those are all tools. And it's how we let the tools, whether we controlling the tools, but like, like this, are we controlling the tools or is the, are the tools controlling us? Are you controlling the tool or is the tool controlling you? So right now we, we may hear, I, I may hear my phone go off. It could it'd be a disruption if, the, if it happened like this. I hear my phone go off, right? And by, if I attend to the phone while I'm doing live broadcast, then it's a distraction. But if I, if I hear it and I don't pay attention to it, and I'm not that I'm being rude, I'm just in the middle of doing something else, then, then I have control of the tech, over the technology and I'm not letting the technology control me. I'm not letting the, the te technology take me where it wants to go when it has its ring, when it has a notification that I should pay attention to. It may ding right now and I may not even hear it because I... I I have it turned over one so that it's on do not disturb. But then two, if we so if you control it like that, most phones have do not disturb. You can set it automatically or you can turn it face down and then, then a little serve one side, you'll feel it vibrate. It's on do not disturb. 
And so make sure we utilize communication. So can it be a distraction? Yes. Can text be a distraction? Absolutely. If you're in a meeting and someone texts and you look at the text, it can be a distraction. Same thing for a video. Same thing for email. Same, we hear all these little dings. We get so many dings nowadays. I mean, I mean, the doorbell back in the day when I was young, young, the doorbell was the only thing that was dinging, right? Ding, ding, you know, you hear that. Now we got everything ding. We got the tablet ding. We got the computer ding. We got the, the cell phone ding. We got all these dings. And everywhere you go is dinging. The car dinging. We open the door. I mean, everything's dinging. So can we control that or is it controlling you? That's the, that's the more question. And that's the answer to that. Hopefully I answered the question there, Sarah. So we have a comment that says, uh, technology can be disruptive and annoying and we now are enslaved by it. Life is was simpler without it. Well, yeah, you can be enslaved by it. It can be a strong influence. Enslaved is a very strong word, but I get what you're saying. Adam. So yes, you can be enslaved. It can enslave someone. And that's where we talk about the five parts of the authentic self. Self-confidence, self-esteem, self-worth, self-image, and self-control. Self-control being the hardest one ever. Of those five, self-control is the hardest to develop and to maintain. At least for me, I'm speaking for myself. And every other person that I have had conversations with and some experience with in teaching or something, self-control is, is typically the most hardest thing to control. And it's even hard to control in conversation. It's hard to control in conversation and communication, especially when you have the emotions tied to it. And therefore, we have to understand who, what, when, where, why, when we're saying things, how we're saying a certain thing, when you have the emotions involved, and especially if you have low self-control. But if you are aware, if you know exactly what you're talking about, what the definition of communication is, then you can have better control over that. So that's one question. Uh, let me take another question. Ben, do you feel the communication gets lost in translation? I feel communication can get lost in translation. Now, I, I'm very so much emphatic that communication is a subjective matter. Some people do it better than others. Some people have been trained. Some people have not. Some people are more aware and more in tune. Some people are more empathetic. So there's a lot of different variables that make it so that it can you can not get lost in translation. One of the things that we'll talk about later on is about making sure you're trained and coaching all those sorts of aspects. So hopefully that answers your question. I'm going to get to more questions at the end. I want to go back into the, the lesson at hand. And so I was at the point of talking about giving you the idea of, of how we communicate now. And let's segue that into the professional aspect of it. When we're talking about, first of all, realize that there are five different generations that are typically within an organization. Five different generations. So the generation... Um, Gen Alpha now, which is 2010 up to now, it probably in about 20 or something like that. The Generation Alpha, they're not in the workplace yet. I have one child who's Generation Alpha. She was born in 2010. She's only 10 years old right now, so she's not even near the workplace. But I'm teaching her how to communicate body language, posture, and everything else right now because she will be one of those in the workforce environment. The other five generations, so we have about six different generations that are out there right now. Five of them are in the workplace environment. Baby boomers, we know, are transitioning out. So let me start from the top. So we have now we have the Gen Z. Those are the people that are from 1996, 2009, right? So Gen Z. Gen Z folks, though they're in the workplace right now. They're old enough to be out in the workplace. They're old, so they are there. We also have Generation Y, which is, or let's just say the millennial. Let me talk about millennials first. We have the millennials. So we have Gen Z. We have that work in the workplace. We have the millennials, we have Generation Y. We have the baby boomers, and we have the silent generation. The silent generation and the baby boomers are being more exited out. My generation, Generation Y, are going to be the people who are more prevalent within the generation now, or the workplace now, I should say, because there's a, a lot of us that are out there. And again, the baby boomers are phasing out. So, and guess what? Each one of these levels of or generations communicate totally differently or even know how to utilize the, the technology and devices that we have totally, totally differently. So we have this old school communication from those who are the silent generation and the baby boomers. They're the most adverse to technology and utilizing technology to communicate. Again, they are the most adverse, but you have to understand that we are in a progressive business or environment now and technology is everywhere. So I had this conversation with one of my, my, actually my brother, we were talking about what 
those generations, even some, even some, even some generation X who are my 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 era, some of them have aversion technology. They're aversive, aversion te technology averse. They have an aversion to technology. They want to use it. Most of us know how to use it. Then there are some that that are baby boomers who are, have a very much more stronger. And then the silent generation who are like, you know, I don't even want to utilize it. And so as you the, the thinking changes, the thought process, the thinking. The level of thinking changes from each one of those generations. Now, my generation, now I grew up where we didn't have technology. I remember when I was in my first, one of my first jobs, we had no computers, right? And then we had computers. Well, the, or, the, the corporate job I was in, we had computers. And then, but we all did have computers and everyone got computers. But then I went to this other organization. They had no computers at first. Then they all got computers. Then computers was like everywhere. So what, they, what happens is I grew up where there was no technology and then we started utilizing technology, which is totally, totally fine, right? So I don't have that technology aversion. The fact is the more I learn about technology, the more efficient I feel. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. But we have the baby boomers and the traditionalists who are like, nah, I don't want to use it as much. Then we go up a level. We have millennials who are born into technology, born into technology, born into the tablet, born into the cell phone. So they, when we start letting them play with their cell phone, play with their tablets when they're younger, kids kind of keep them quiet. And so they grew up utilizing this technology. And we have my daughter, my 10 year old, who's in this generation alpha now, knows how to utilize a computer 10 years old, much better than a lot of people I know in my generation. Knows how to use the programs, knows how to edit videos. She was doing something on TikTok the other day. I was like, oh my God, this girl, she's putting together a nice little video on TikTok. And I monitor her account, so we're not going to get too outlandish there. But I'm like, she put together, she's video editing. I'm like, I'm just starting to video edit. I was just starting to video edit like maybe like 10 years ago, right? And I'm still getting good at it, but the technology is just like, boom. I'm like, oh my God, she's editing. So the, the technology aspect of it and communication and how they communicate is different. We have to realize that. And so what you have to do in a business, understand how to communicate on the person's level where they are. Millennials are all about making sure that you utilize technology, but also not just technology, but also how they have been spoken to from parents. Our generation, Generation X and Generation Y, some of them may, may have children now, but how they, are, how they communicate is totally different. And so when you take that into the organization and you have this Old, let's say old school baby boom or a silent generation who's very much so authoritarian, the communication, the flow of communication has changed. And baby boomer, excuse me, millennials will tell you in a heartbeat that they will leave an organization if someone is being more authoritative to them. They will leave if a boss is rude to them and, out, and, and have outbursts to them. They will leave if they're not treated fair. They will leave if they don't have these certain nuances about the job that avail of allow them to, to communicate their way and to, to be more empathetic. They'll, they'll tell you straight out, they'll leave. And I've seen it happen. And that's one of the reasons why we have some higher turnover rate in organizations is because there's a lack of communication between different generations. And that's a gap that has to be closed. Never mind the technology that they're utilizing, but face-to-face -face conversation has also been totally, totally different. So, so Narcita says, I agree with that technology allows me to be more efficient as well. It just takes some self-discipline so you don't allow the technology to control you. Absolutely. Absolutely. You can't let it control you. When it starts to control you, that's when you're going to be more of a detriment to, to utilizing the tool in the right way. Everything's a tool. Everything's a tool. The tool, here's the tool, and then you lay communication on top of that. I'm going to talk about, again, I'm going to give you Five characteristics you start thinking about when we're talking about communication and how to utilize technology in the right way as well. OK, so now let's continue on. So we have these five different generations. Also, from an organization standpoint, we have disparate organizations. We have global organizations now and multinational organizations or national organizations that have many different offices. And so we can utilize. We have been utilizing technology to communicate faster, better stronger, smoother, everything else, right? Technology is very prevalent within the organization. So because disparate organizations, it's gonna be so hard to take technology out. And I was listening to something on NPR this morning, talking about putting the toothpaste back into the tube is not gonna happen. They're talking about how to control technology going forward and making sure that we're not over-utilizing it or AI and utilizing artificial intelligence, AI, machine learning, have not over-utilized that. 
toothpaste out of the tube. No putting it back. You just have to learn how to control it and utilize it in the right way. We write about that in our book. In fact, my brother Frank Shines did an extensive study on that and wrote about it in our book. I'll tell you about that a little bit later on. And then we have the COVID era, right? So I'm painting you this picture still. COVID era changed the game on things, right? Now there was a period where it's like, nope, no more face-to-face. -face. Don't go out and talk to anybody. Don't go out and meet with anybody. Now you got to utilize technology. Now we are forced to utilize technology. We're forced to utilize technology. If you're going to be progressive, you're going to stay ahead of the game. You're going to stay ahead of the curve. Keep your ear to the ground. Hear what's going on and then implement as soon as possible. Tech COVID changed the game on folks. There were some folks that were not ready. There are some folks who just were not ready for this little game changer that snuck in, unbeknownst to us, came into the, the global environment, a global ecosystem, and made it so that we were not communicating face-to-face -face for a while. So what do we have to do? Utilize technology to communicate, broadcast like we're doing right now, email, more, even more email. Couldn't find a webcam. I had one of our consultants who was looking for webcam. Couldn't find a webcam to save his life for a while. All in allocation. Why? Because more and more people are buying desktops and desks, desktops, computer, laptop, computer. I had to go buy my daughter a laptop. Couldn't find one for a while. It took me a, a while to, a place, to find a place that actually had a good laptop because everyone now have to utilize technology to communicate. Schools, businesses, whatever. COVID changed the game. So we had to learn how to utilize that technology. And we're still having to do that. We're just now starting to meet with some people face to face and start putting ourselves out there again. Some people are getting sick, some people aren't, but we have some mandates put in place so we can be more safe. So understanding that portion of it also and making sure that we understand that we have to make sure that we facilitate this in the right manner, in the right manner. Technology is a tool, but it can be utilized, misappropriate, misappropriately used, and therefore we wanna make sure we're not utilizing to that degree. So. Here we have, so none, let me paint you another picture. Now I'm gonna to talk to you about the old school communication and then how it's, it's communicated now in the workplace environment. And so I'm gonna give you this, this characteristic, right? I'll talk to you about the characteristic. I'll talk about the old way that it was communicated and then the new way that is facilitated now in terms of communication. So one of the aspects that we talk about is having the power structure of an organization, business operations and process. If you downloaded that, see that. The power structure of the organization typically came from the, the helm or the green area, the, the CXOs who made the strategy or executed the strategy or designed the strategy for the organization. So we have that in a hierarchical standpoint. So the traditional approach was more hierarchy. The tradition, the collaborative approach now that's being taken is more networks and communities. So you'll see now more networks and communities and even in businesses, even at the higher level, instituting more people to that are at the lower levels giving more information. It's that information flowing up from the red and the yellow areas up to the green areas in order to help out with the strategy that, that's going forward. Why? Because those people are now the front line. Old school was like, okay, this is my business. We're at the helm of the business. I'm the chairman. You're the CEO. You're the CXO. We're going to put together a strategy. We're going to execute. Now they have these little focus groups, communities, and, and other types of opportunities, networks, in order to facilitate the, the strategy going forward, communicate it up, and then disperse, disseminate it throughout the organization and outside the organization. That's one. We have power flow, power flow. The power flow was from top down. Now it's in all directions. So if you see that diagram again, we have the, the three levels. We have people at every one of those levels. We have organizational conversation or communication at horizontally within those organizations and then unilaterally you know, vertically within the organization as well. Understanding that now you have this flow from everywhere that, that comes into aspect of, of how we communicate. The third one I talk about power relationships, power relationships. The relationships used to be, I'm the boss, I'm in command, I got control, right? Now, from the collaborative, the collaborative approach, the more progressive companies, there are some companies that still have that mandate that I just, that I just spoke about. The more progressive companies are now are all about service to others. And this is where the millennials are talking about how they will leave an organization if they're not getting served in that way. So now service, the servant leadership, the servant leader in taking care of their, their, their subordinates and making sure that even that, that diagram is kind of flipped upside down. The person who is at the top of the organization is actually one who's serving everyone else in that fashion. 
And so that's made for more progressive communication, made for a progressive organization, and also made for a difference in how we communicate. Another thing I want to talk about is the authority, received authority. There was authority that was said, here, you know what, I'm going to point you as the, the helm of this particular division. I'm going to point you as this person who is in control over this. And now it's all about fluid authority and authenticity. We hear authenticity all the time, fluid authority, meaning that I'm going to give you the power. I'm going to give you the decision-making power in order to make the decision on how this thing is going to be executed. Instead of me just telling you, I want you to be the person who's going to take, you're going to have full accountability over that. And yes, that's right. Full answerability. So if it goes right, guess what? All good. If it goes wrong, guess what? You're still accountable. That's the whole thing about accountable, having that. So they start to permeate this more, this culture of accountability. And then the last one to give you is all about leadership tactics. Leadership tactics, what I spoke about last week, even the, in the terms of Ellen DeGeneres' her environment at the studio, it was more about fear, leading with fear, intimidation, and making sure that that's the, that's the mantra on how you lead, how we communicate, what we communicate, and what they see, what they see in our body language, what they see and what they hear coming out of our mouth, that's how we communicate. It was fear, it was, uh, it was intimidation, it was authority, uh, I'm the authoritative figure, also charisma, utilizing charisma. So now the collaborative, collaborative approach is by leading by example now, right? The more progressive organizations lead by example. The people who are taught, I'm gonna make it more subjective. The people in those organizations lead by example. They also have, are giving the empowerment. I'm empowering you to do this. They're leading by empowering. You know, you're the czar over this particular thing. You have the power to make that decision. They lead by persuasion and humor, adding humor. It used to be much, so much more dogmatic. You know what? We're going to run this organization. We're going to be and it's so stern and so stoic. Now they're starting to add a little bit more humor. You even see that in the commercial, a bit more humor, a bit more persuasion. Now they're, and then leading by wisdom. So you can look up wisdom based authority. I mean, excuse me, wisdom based leadership, excuse me. Wisdom-based leadership. That's a, a new thing that has, and they've written some papers about it. Wisdom, go figure, leading from wisdom. Is that something new? Maybe, I don't know, but no, it's not new. People have been doing it for ages, for years, for thousands of years, but it's now starting to make its segue into our organizations and allow that to, for us to be more communicative. Leading by charisma as well, leading by charisma, having the self-confidence, self-confidence being even more so prevalent and showing that this person has the the power to do what they need to do in order to be much more versed, much more versed in how they communicate. So, so one of the um, wisdom-based leadership sounds interesting. Yes, look that up. There's a lot of information about wisdom-based leadership out there. Um, another comment is, yes, indeed, is a great tool if utilized to your advantage. Absolutely. Any tool can be utilized to advantage. So let's wrap this up now, okay? So we talked about all the different aspects. We talked about the authority figures. Now I'm going to give you the five different nuances, the characteristics that you should in institute in your communication. You ready? Here we go. Before we do that, make sure if you are new here, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Please make sure you subscribe, share with someone else. We are out to reach a billion people. We're going to target that first million. So make sure you share those to anyone else, all friends, colleagues, brother-in-law, sister-in-law, anybody who's in the workforce that needs to understand how to communicate better, even your spouses or significant others. Share it with them because the principles of Communication are all the same. It doesn't matter. The principles of leadership, the principles of accountability, the principles of self-confidence are all the same. It doesn't matter. So now let's talk about these five characteristics that you should utilize in your organization. And I'm taking this from a martial arts perspective. Remember, this system that we designed is from martial arts, the Eastern philosophy kind of thing. And so we institute this into the organization. I've been utilizing this, improving this for a very, very long time now. And it's all is written all over not just articles, but research after research after research, I still find these five things prevalent that I'm going to tell you that we don't really associate in communication, but we've associated it in other aspects of other things in our lives, from technology, from martial arts, from working out. So first thing I want, I want to add to you or give to you is, is speed making sure you have speed, okay? Speed is something that you want to utilize in a very progressive way. So number one, speed. Let me grab my notes here, okay, speed. 
relatively rapid moving, going, going rapid a rate of motion or progress. Make sure you speed. So we at Institute, we utilize technology to speed up our conversation, to speed up our communication. Utilizing snail mail, I get some questions here in a minute because I got some hands raised. Utilizing snail mail is all good if it's appropriate. But if you want to, if you have a multinational organization, imagine you needed to get something there fast, a global organization. What are you going to utilize? You can utilize technology that can instantly put you on the other side of the world. Instant messaging, texting, whatever that may be. So speed in your communication. Not necessarily talking faster, but utilizing information and technology in order to facilitate the speed of delivery of the information that you are disseminating, that you are communicating to whoever else, to said person. And that can be on a to a, a, a many groups of people like we're doing right now through broadcasting. I can immediately talk to people who are all over the world, even people who are locally. I can cross local boundaries. So speed is one. The second thing I want to give you is accuracy, making sure you accurately communicate. How do you accurately communicate? Utilize the complete communication technique. And I did this, I talked about this in our, our verbal communication uh, lead magnet. Talk about it in terms of who, what, why, where, when, and how. Anytime you have conversation and you want to give direction or information, mandate, if you can take out the opportunity to use the imagination, if you can take out the opportunity for speculation, if you can take out the opportunity for assumption in communicating, answering the questions who, what, why, where, when, how, then you have a better way of utilizing technology. I mean, it's utilizing communication. So if I said, hey, take this report over to, take this report over to Sarah, you think, well, who, what report? Where's the report? Where, I mean, there's all so many things that you, have, you may have questions about. But if I said, hey, John, can you walk this particular report over to Sarah because she has a meeting and needs to make copies before the meeting, I would greatly appreciate that. And I answer the questions, who, Sarah or John, Think this what report walk it over to how walk it over to Sarah's desk where right and so I'm answering those who what why where when how question why because she has a meeting she needs to make copies right so if I'm if I'm communicating like that it doesn't take a long time but you're just being thorough and accurate utilizing the complete complete communication technique next thing is powered influence powered influence in your communication understanding that you can utilize certain words that have what we call emotional trigger words. NLP is kind of is good for this, but you utilize emotional trigger words. You utilize what we call power words, power talking, and, and who you're talking to matters, influence. You have influence and power. Understanding that you can utilize that in your communication and how you utilize words, how you piece together words, how you articulate words, and how you pronounce the words, making sure that you have certain emphasis, utilizing nonverbal communication of haptics. You can utilize, you have more power and influence in your communication. The next one I want to give you is, is making sure you're savvy. Savvy, being savvy in, 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 in your communication, utilizing the smile, utilizing the, the nonverbal communication, utilizing the right types of facial expressions to get to, to the desired result, what you want this person to do, or what you want to, to have for this person, what you want to give this person. It, it goes both ways because you're communicating. Understanding you be sa you're savvy in that. And then being finesse, utilizing finesse in your communication. How do you put together everything that you're utilizing in a way that's quick, that's, that's, that, that's fast, that's, that's accurate, that's being more, that's utilizing the right amount of power and authority in order to get the desired result? That's being finesse in your conversation. There are some people that are good at it, some people are that aren't. And it's a learned behavior. The good thing about communication it is a learned behavior. I want to answer some questions right quick. I got a couple of questions. One question says, um, Tim. Uh, I miss the old forms of communication, writing letters where, where a lot of thought was put into it. Yep, that's cool. If you like writing letters, all good. I wasn't the person to write letters. I'd rather talk to you face to face. But anything is a, everything is a tool. And I'll wrap it up with uh, some information on that. It says, why do you think communication is such a big problem in organizations? Good question. Here, I'm going to give you three progressive, or I should say three answers that are tied to one another. The causation between one. One is that communication is subjective. That's the first thing. Because communication is so subjective because it's, it's individualized. Some people know how to communicate. Some people don't know how to communicate. Which leads me to point number two, which you need training and coaching. Not training or coaching. You need training and coaching. Because training gives you that information that 
information, that influx of information, knowledge that's disseminated. But then coaching allows you to be more creative and understand how and why you do certain things. So training and coaching or coaching style training, which we do here at Sideria International, making sure you have that going for you, which also leads me to a third point is, is, is complacency. That's the complacency. That's why it's, it's hard, because if you just give people the training, one, two day training and communication, what happens is they eventually revert back to some of the techniques that they utilize that they just were taught from parents and bosses or even bad bosses, poor leaders, whatever, that you go back, you revert back to the thing that's familiar to you. So complacency sets in. And so we have to stay on top of it. We have to stay on top of it because, it, again, communication is subjective and it takes training and coaching because it's subjective. Everyone needs to be trained and everyone needs to be coached and how to communicate appropriately. And then you also need to understand that if, if you don't get trained appropriately and coached appropriately, then complacency will set in. So those are my, that's my answer leading from one, and the reason why I can answer that so quickly because I just spoke about this last night to one of my friends when we were talking. And then last one, why, uh, what would you suggest to recognize, uh, what would you suggest you recognize some of these issues within your business and department? John, uh, John that's John also, uh, Jonathan and John. So John, making sure you have training and coaching. I mean, there's no, there's nothing more that I can add to it than more having more training and coaching is going to be more advantageous for you. It's going to be more advantageous for the person. It is or the person listening to it. If you're on the same wavelength, on the same page, and you can understand how to utilize that. Now I'm going to wrap it up with this. Those five pieces I'm going to tell you again. Making sure you have speed. Making sure you have accuracy. Making sure you have power and influence. Making sure you have savvy. And make sure you have finesse in your conversation. Those five things are learned behaviors. Those five things can be learned. It should be learned. It should be instituted in your communication. It's all about how you, and, and, and then you have to communicate with utilizing those five aspects with confidence. Now, I promise you, if you utilize this in your organization, you're going to hire, have higher productivity, you're going to have more efficiency, and you're going to have more profitability. Those three things, the PEP, P-E-P, -E profitability, efficiency, and productivity, you want to make sure that you have that within your organization. Every organization needs to have that. That's the only way we're going to reduce this $37 billion problem. It's never going to go down to zero because we're not programmed all to talk the same way. It's not like everyone's, someone's sitting at a computer plugged into the back of your head like the matrix, and then next you know, you're programmed to communicate a certain way. It's not like that. When it comes to communication, you have your way that you feel you like to communicate. I have my way that I feel I like to communicate. Everyone else around you has their way they like to communicate. However, if we all get on the same page with the principles of, un, of communication, the principles of accountability, the principles of leadership, then we can all play on an even playing field. That's the only way that you're going to utilize. You're going to graduate from the old school communication that you utilize, that you may have been taught, to the new way of communicating, utilizing the tool in the right way. It doesn't matter which tool. And that's the only thing, the final thing I want to leave you with. It doesn't matter the tool. It doesn't matter if it's your cell phone. It doesn't matter if it's your computer. It doesn't matter if you're using the instant message. It doesn't matter if you're writing a letter. It doesn't matter. Whichever tool you use to communicate your message, right? And in communication, we have one message, one recipient, but we have at least one message, right? So whatever tool you utilize to communicate your message, if you utilize the complete communication technique, answering the questions, who, what, why, where, when, how, you can utilize the, the tool effectively. It doesn't matter. I don't want to emphasize that again. It doesn't matter. This is my, it's, it's a subjective, it's my opinion. I'm Grandison Shines here at Sudan International, so I'm going to give you my opinion on broadcasting. It doesn't matter the tool. The tool has no, no weight, no variance. The only thing the tool can, will allow you is more speed. It'll allow you more access, but it doesn't have any, anything to do with how you communicate, what you are communicating. I can say, I can text someone and say, hey, take this report over to Sarah's desk. Or I can text that same person utilizing utilize the complete communication prop technique utilizing who, what, why, where, when, how, and then I still get my message across. Thank you very much, folks. I'm Granderson Shines here with Sudura International. Thank you very much for this broadcast, listening in. I'm going to be answering some questions. I'll make another video on some questions I didn't answer. I appreciate you being here. Finally, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Share it with someone else who needs to understand how to utilize communication in order to fulfill what they need. And make sure you go from that old school communication to this new school communication and hearing all the things we spoke about it. All right, in this video. Talk to you later, folks. Have a great rest of your Wednesday. Bye.